So in this last section, I'm going to talk about how we can increase um, the efficiency of the ranking cycles. Uh, there's various different ways that we can do that, as we'll see. And I'm going to talk about the advantages and um, disadvantages of each as well. Okay, so if you remember back to um, the first session, um, talked about um, Carnot's uh, heat engine. And basically you're taking um, heat from a high temperature reservoir, converting some of it into work and rejecting the, um, the rest of the low temperature reservoir. And in here, this is basically our ranking cycle. So we've got a cycle in here. There's a working fluid in the heat engine operating on the cycle, producing work. So if you call um, the, the efficiency of this heat engine, it's basically this function. So it's one minus uh, the ratio of the temperatures between the low uh, to the low temperature reservoir over the high temperature reservoir. So for a Carnot heat engine, we can only increase um, the efficiency um, of this um, system. We can only increase the efficiency either by increasing TH or by reducing TL. There's nothing else we can do um, to increase the efficiency of this uh, Carnot heat engine. So if we kind of um, apply that to our ranking cycle, then what can we do? Well, if we lowered the um, condenser pressure, um, the, the pressure in our condenser, then we're effectively lowering TL, so we can increase our efficiency that way. If we um, further heated the steam before it went into the um, um, into the turbine, we're effectively increasing TH, um, so that will increase the efficiency of our system overall. And we can also increase the, um, the boiler pressure, uh, so that will also increase um, TH of our um, uh, system as well. So there's three things here that we can do to increase the efficiency of our uh, ranking cycle um, of our power and get more uh, power from our um, from our power plant. So we're going to consider each of these in turn. So first of all, we'll start off with lowering the condenser pressure. And for each of these, what I've done is I've drawn the um, the ranking cycle for the original cycle, and then um, with the the dashes, I've shown the new points. Um, that it would be if um, for each change that was applied. So you can see here that um, here we've lowered the um, pressure of the condenser. So instead of being on this condenser pressure, we drop down and we're on this um, condenser pressure and everything else um, kind of being the same. And you can see that um, this has resulted in this shaded area, which is the increase in W net or the increase in the network done in the system. Um, so um, as I say, we reduce this down and we've got an increase in pressure. Um, that's not without a um, couple of challenges or um, limitations. We can't go on reducing the pressure of the condenser um, forever. Um, there's going to be a couple of limiting factors of that. Firstly, um, the cooling medium limits the pressure. We've got to reject this heat to somewhere, so we still need to be able to um, you can't draw that temperature too low, otherwise there'd be no delta T between your condenser and your uh, low temperature reservoir, so you won't be able to reject the heat. Um, also, if you reduce the pressure um, uh, too much, you start running into sealing issues between the atmosphere and um, your plant equipment. Uh, and also, keeping all things the same, you can see that this it increases the moisture content of the steam in the turbine, so without more superheat, um, then we've moved from basically dry steam here to wet steam now going into our turbine. So if this was dropped even further, then the, um, uh, we'd have even more moisture in our steam turbine, um, which obviously isn't good um, from a corrosion point of view. And also you can see that we've also need a little bit more heat being supplied because, um, because with this lower condenser pressure, then when the um, fluid is condensed, it's uh, um, uh, this new temperature. So when it um, goes through the pump, we need obviously need a bit more heat that's being supplied into the boiler. But overall, this is a positive thing because we've increased the network um, from the ranking cycle by reducing the condenser pressure. So one of the other thing that we can do, or one of the other things we can do, is we can um, further superheat, so basically increase the amount of superheat. Um, now this actually has is kind of a win-win um, scenario. So you can see 
again the original um, ranking cycle and the um, the extra bit the cycle shown as the dashes so and this results in a um, net increase in work done as we're increasing the CP pressure so to say this is kind of win-win in um, some respects because not only do we increase the network um, of this cycle but the way that I've drawn it here is uh, um, just say we were working at this we, this was our um, temperature to our in, uh, the inlet to our turbine and yeah, for nice entropic um, uh, f efficiency of 100% then you'd end up with this moist steam in the, at the end of if going through your last turbine stage it isn't very good whereas you can see with this greater uh, inlet temperature we're now having dry steam at the exit of our turbine so we don't have the, any of those issues that might um, damage our turbine beds so it has to kind of two um, positives it increases the um, the net work of the cycle overall and it also reduces the mo moisture content of the steam um, through the last stages of the turbine however um, you can't keep pushing this up and up and basically what you're limited by is you're limited by the properties and metallurgical properties of the turbine so you can't in keep increasing the temp the inlet temperature of the turbine indefinitely um, without um, advances in uh, the the materials that you use in for the turbine blades particularly in the um, the early stages of the steam turbine Okay, so the next thing we could do is we can increase um, the boiler pressure. Now, um, if we do that, um, and again, all things, other things being the same, then you can see our original cycle, so it's a little bit difficult to see in here, was one to two to three to four and back to one. Now, if we increase the boiler pressure, then what we're doing is we're saying we pump the water. When we compress the water, we compress it to a slightly high pressure here. So when we add our heat, we end up um, with this net increase in um, work done. You can again see the shaded area there. And assuming that we've limited our, um, uh, we've reached the kind of material properties of our turbine, so we can't increase the, um, the pressure going into the turbine anymore. So you can see that three dash and um, three are at the same temperature. And if we limit that, then you can see then that we kind of, fall short of this line so we've increased the, ne the network here but we've kind of decreased w net um, by having um, limiting the temperature that's going into the turbine so overall you know obviously depending on the pressures that you have you should have an overall increase in work um, the network from the um, from the cycle but um, it is not as much because you're sacrificing some work by increasing the temperature in the boiler against what you're getting back from um, uh, the steam um, from the steam turbine. So, as I say this is kind of um, mildly sort of um, successful on its own. But one way that you can um, actually address this is with superheat. So what we're saying is rather than just passing the um, steam directly through the turbine we put it through a second stage and increase the superheat and so this is something that's commonly done now in um, uh, uh, power plants so to make, take advantage of the um, higher boiler pressure uh, the lower condensing um, pressure um, is put in in this extra reheat cycle so um, I, I'll talk about the schematic here. So, whereas before um, we'd start off at um, our cold, low pressure uh, water, we'd pump that up before it goes into the boiler, heat it, and we'd pass it through a high pressure um, turbine, and then it would go, we'd get the steam out, and then we'd condense it. But with this reheat cycle, what we're doing is once we've got the steam out of our turbine, rather than just condensing it, and taking it back to state one what we're doing is we pass that steam back through the boiler so it picks up um, more heat from the boiler um, so it's at a new um, temperature and pressure um, five that then that steam is then passed through a low pressure turbine to extract some additional work before finally that um, steam is then condensed back to state one so that's the um, schematic over here, and you can see that represented on the TS diagram over here. So 
we pump the water, we heat the water, and then before we would have just, um, as you expand in the steam through the turbine, it would have dropped down to about here. But before it gets there, it's taken out, passed back through the boiler and heated back up um, to 0.5. Now notice that these this pressure has dropped from um, 3 to 4. So remember, um, go and look at a TS diagram um, for water and you've got all the lines of constant pressure on here. So the pressure has dropped, um, but we ha have increased the, the temperature so we can extract um, some more work out of the, the steam that we've got there. So let's say this addresses some of the um, the issues that you would have if you were to just um, say just increase the boiler pressure on its own. So you can actually um, improve the efficiency of the system as a whole with what's called this reheat uh, cycle. So if it works once, um, why can't you do it again and again. Why couldn't you just have multiple reheat cycles to keep taking advantage of this and have, you know, three or four turbines of, you know, high pressure, medium pressure, etc., right down to a very low pressure turbine? Well, um, the answer is um, kind of a, a law of diminishing returns. So, as for each additional reheat stage that you have, it increases the efficiency by half. Of the previous efficiency gain so just to kind of explain that so if you the second if you had a second reheat cycle that would only increase the efficiency by half of the first reheat cycle so you can see that obviously you get a gain each time you put in a um, reheat cycle but it's, the difference is being halved each time coupled with the fact that obviously the additional um, cost and infrastructure uh, and commitment you need to put in an additional steam turbine and the, the pipe work for the reheat etc each time then you pretty um, quickly reach a kind of um, a middle ground where if you have more than two re the more than two reheat cycles isn't practical because of the, when you balance the efficiency gains against the cost of the um, plant then it's just not financially viable so um, modern uh, gas plants, uh, power plants, tend to have uh, no more than two reheat cycles. However, um, one way that um, uh, they are looking to um, improve the efficiencies of um, uh, power plants is with what's called a combined cycle gas um, turbine. So. Rather than just um, generating heat from the, uh, so, sorry, generating power from the um, ranking part of the system alone, you generate it from the, basically from the braking cycle of, as you're burning the gas. So I told you around this com combined cycle here. So this is basically our um, gas t um, turbine here. So this is operating on the braking cycle. So we're putting in um, heat into the combustion chamber and we're obviously um, uh, through fuel that we're burning and that's generating work along this shaft and then what we're saying then is we use the um, basically the exhaust of the turbine to then heat um, our working fluid which would be water uh, in the boiler to then generate steam to put through a, um, um, a low pressure steam turbine to then generate power so we're generating power from the burning of the fuel and also generating power from the steam that's being produced by the exhaust products of the um, the fuel that we're burning. So, as I say, it's combined heat and power. You, well, it's analogous to combined heat and power. And the efficiency of these plants can kind of get up to around 50 or 60% now, um, which is obviously um, pretty good. Um, so, becoming more and more um, uh, prevalent. And you add in the fact that you can run these, um, these gas turbines on... Um, uh, bio derived fuel derived gases we um, talked about in one of the other lectures then suddenly you've got a system where you're running it on um, basically a biofuel you've got a combined heat and power and then you've got a good very efficient way of generating heat um, power from uh, a low carbon fuel and this looks like the way that a lot of uh, power generating uh, plants are going 
Okay, so that concludes this lecture on um, vapor cycles. Um, if you have any comments or queries, then let me know. Um, thanks for listening.